This is Bridget. She's made over $300,000 revenue selling print products on Etsy. In today's interview, Bridget shares the one thing that made her over $180,000 revenue in only three months. Once I implemented this one thing, my sales double. So make sure to watch this video in its entirety as this is, in my opinion, something that everyone should be doing in their Etsy print on demand business. Welcome Bridget. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to have you on this call today uh, to kind of essentially go over the one thing that you implemented in your business that doubled your sales almost pretty quick. Uh, so we're going to kind of dive into that later in this interview. But before we get there, I'm really curious to kind of hear your story. Like what were you doing before Etsy and kind of what got you started on this Etsy journey? Yeah. So I'm going to give like a quick little like recap. So I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for 10 years. I don't practice anymore, but that's kind of like has been like my career. And then fast forward to like 2020 when we were kind of forced to be home at that point, I was working like PRN at like, like a surgery center. So because they were not going to be scheduling surgeries anymore, they kind of just let me go for a little bit. So I was home with three kids, my husband, and I just started thinking about like, I wanted more for life. Like I didn't want it to just like wait until I was 70 and retire as a nurse. Like I wanted things to be differently. And it just kind of started like that. Then 2021 came and I always wanted to either like start like a blog. I don't know why, but I, I'm the type of person that once I say I'm going to do something, I just jump right in. So I started a blog about twins because I do have twins that are almost five. So I did that for a little bit. And then I was like, mm, I don't really enjoy writing. So then I went to like KDP, did that. And I was like, eh, not really. But then I was already knew about Etsy and I kind of was like, okay, Etsy. And then I decided to open like a printable uh, digital shop that I was selling like a getting out of debt, like getting out of debt or finances, like type of digitals because I was into that sort of stuff. And then when I was doing research about that on YouTube, that's when I came across print on demand. And I was kind of like, wait, like, is this really true? Like, is this a scam? Like you can make money doing this. Like you don't have to touch the product. Like somebody handles all that. So then what happened is I literally closed the whole digital shop. I opened like a print on demand shop, like literally like the last week of 2021. And then I jumped into it like coming to like January, 2022. But then at that point, my husband and my sister like run like a HR business and they wanted to start doing like wellness retreats. So we moved to Barbados in 2022. Mm -hmm. So then I was kind of, I started the shop. I started doing research. I started adding designs, but I wasn't really being consistent. I was kind of doing things, not doing things. And then like some, I mean, fall of 2022, that's when I was like, you know what? I want to go all in. I want to take this seriously. And that's really when I kind of started to just really jump in and do research and really truly learn this business. And I think that's when everything kind of started for me when this business. Wow. That's super exciting. So you said like your background was in the nursing industry. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people that I talk to, it's, it's so funny. They're either like a nurse or they're a teacher or maybe like a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. And the designs that they kind of start with kind of like parallel what they what they're coming in with. Like you know, uh -huh. say home mom might launch mom designs or the teacher right. might launch more teacher designs. Like when you when you launched, mm -hmm. did you do like the, the market research or did you launch like a bunch of like nursing designs? Because that's like what you were familiar with or I, have any success in that niche? So so the funny thing is I didn't even start with that. I was just designing a lot of mom. I literally fell into the whole trap of like, oh, let me design a lot of mom things that were super generic, like mama, mom. And of course you're new. I didn't know what I was doing. So my designs were just pretty basic and I wasn't, you know, getting any traction. So I was doing a lot of, a lot of that. And then I think at that point it was like a uh, 4th of July. So like right before that I was doing like 4th of July designs, but still they were really generic. Like I fell into that whole trap of like, Oh, here's a, you know, happy 4th of July design. So of course I was getting no traction. So I did a lot of those type of designs at the beginning. <laughs> I really was not doing any research. I was just pretty much throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping that it would just stick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, and that's super common for a lot of people just getting started. Compared to like your strategy now, like is that what you're oh. doing today or is there more like a certain oh. <laughs> strategy today that, that, that's common, that contributing to your success? Oh no, there's, there's, a there's a strategy now. Like I think, once I like fall 2022, when I was like, I, I got to just stop with whatever I'm doing because it's not working. And I was like, I really got to take this serious and really figure it out, like how to come at it from a different angle. And I started like watching videos and everybody keeps talking about research and research and research and research. I was like, okay, well, obviously there's a reason why people are talking about this. 
So that's when it kind of just switched for me. And I started coming at it from a perspective of like, I can't just throw spaghetti at the wall and hoping it stick. I have to research. I have to go and find out what people really want because at the end of the day, the customers, they're the ones that are buying your items. Like I'm not my ideal customer. They're the ones that will tell you what they want. So that's the moment that I switched that, that's when I started having like a little bit of traction. Yeah, and that, that makes total sense. So what I love about Etsy is like, Etsy is a marketplace where we have access to tools. We have access to even like looking at other shops mm -hmm. and success leads clues. Like you can say, I want to go launch tote bags. Mm -hmm. You can go find three other shops that are killing in tote bags. Use a tool like Everbee to scrape their shops, see what designs mm -hmm. are working, what designs are not working, and then try to mirror the success. And then that's how I personally found my, my success on, um, on Etsy. Um, so in, in regards to strategy, mm -hmm. at any point, either now or then, did you ever use Etsy ads? Yes, I did. I mean, at the beginning I didn't. And then once I was kind of dabbling and I was like switching my strategy, I did, but I started with like a dollar a day. It was ridiculous. And then I was like, why is it not working? I did. I fell into the whole trap of like getting emotional about it and seeing why it wasn't working. And I think it was like, I watched you in an interview with Cassie and then also Hannah, and they were talking about like the power of ads and just ripping the bandaid and just like do it going all in. So I think once I was just like, you know what, I need to just remove myself from it and go like all in. I literally went from like a dollar, then like, I think like $10, a hundred dollars. And then I just went through like a thousand dollars. Like I just little, like, I just was like, I need to just do it. And that has been so powerful for me. Yeah. So, so for anyone who doesn't know how Etsy ads works, Etsy ads are paid per click. So you only pay if someone clicks mm -hmm. onto your listing. You want people to click onto your listing because mm -hmm. you want them to buy your product. And it's, again, it's only, you only pay if someone clicks. So if no one's clicking, you're not paying a thousand dollars per day, for example. Yeah. Um, so it's super trendy for like, you know, a dollar a day or $5 per day, right. <laughs> um, but knowing that it might cost you know 25 cents per click and the average conversion rate might be $3 or 3%. Right. You need more than a dollar spread across yep. hundred listings to sell <laughs> yep. and sales with the rank and rank leads to sales, right? So yep. you need to have Etsy ads to help drive rank to get more sales and it creates this flywheel effect. Um, and again, Etsy ads are only, uh, it's PPC. Again, it's not an expense. It's a payment to drive to more sales. Yep. Uh, so super cool that you're doing that now. And again, it sounds like the more you ramped your ads, the more success mm -hmm. you found because again, mm -hmm. you that flywheel effect going. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of your listings, um, is there any yeah. specific product that you're comfortable sharing that you found success on a product level? So sweatshirts. I mean, I, I started with sweatshirts and shirts, but I found the most successful with sweatshirts. I'm a strong believer that you do have to start with one product at a time. That's like the one thing that I didn't fell into the trap of like, you know, adding 50 billion products. I did start it with the one and I literally have made six figures with the one. I'm just now at the point that I'm adding other product categories because it makes sense. But I do believe that it's hard enough to like learn how to design and research and do all these things that when you add all these different products, it just makes it even more difficult. And again, one horrible design on a sweatshirt is not going to make it better by adding it into a mug or a t-shirt. Like it's just, yeah. it's, you think it's going to increase your chances, but, but it's not like, it's just not. So get good at one category, really like study that category, get really well at it. And then if it makes sense, spend to other ones, because there is a ton of people making six figures and more on Etsy selling like one product category. Yeah, I think that's some great advice and I wouldn't, I couldn't agree more. Uh, again, like you, you research this one product type and again, it takes time to create the listing images and to do your market research and what sells well on a mug isn't necessarily right. going to sell well on a t-shirt and what sells yep. well on a t-shirt isn't necessarily going to sell well on a tote bag. So yep. instead of spending all that time doing all those listing creations and all that market research for different product, just hyper focus on one scale to the moon, then yep. move over to the next scale to the mm -hmm. moon. Then, so I only launched personally. Uh, mm -hmm. one or two product types uh, per year. Mm -hmm. We would scale it to six figures and move on to the next, scale it to six figures and move on to the next. And that's how we grew our Etsy uh, shop to, you know, over $3 million in three years was yep. we didn't have, you know, a thousand different product types. Right. We only sold three or four product types, but we went really right. deep into each one. So I yep. think that's some great piece of advice. So in terms of sweatshirts, so a lot mm -hmm. of people go into apparel and then you went into mm -hmm. sweatshirts. Did you do group or things or was it more uh, just sweatshirts? So I started with mostly just sweatshirts and then I did like group listings, but it was still with sweatshirts. So it was just expanding still to that same product category. Because again, 
I'm a firm believer on just like making that one category work and just expanding within that same category. So that's kind of how I did it too. That makes total sense. So I'm super kind of excited to kind of jump into this next part of the interview where yeah. you said like you made six figures, you know, doing the market research, locking sweatshirts, mm -hmm. you made one change in your business. <laughs> You went and you doubled your business. You made a hundred thousand dollars, and then in three months, you made a hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Would you mind kind of sharing like what that was and kind of like what the the journey was uh, in accomplishing that? Yeah, so it was personalization. So the moment I did that, everything changed. And I mean, I knew it. Like I just knew it, but I was just being stubborn about it, and I was just like, I don't want to do it. And I think it just kind of started with when I watched you, uh, the interview with Cassie and you were talking about it. And then I watched your other interviews with other YouTubers and you still keep talking about it. Cause again, guys, there's no secret, like the same things work. You keep talking about your launch strategies and you keep talking about personalization. And then I think it wasn't until you had the interview with April that it just kind of synced in. And I was like, I gotta just do it. Like I gotta just try. And at that point, I was like, it was like literally like November 1st. And I'm like, if I'm going to do this, it's got to be now. So I had the signs that were already doing well without personalization. And I went ahead and added personalization to those designs. And they literally like, like they took off like crazy. So if you're on the fence about personalization, you should do it. <laughs> Yes. I mean, I preach it on this channel every single day. We built whole custom again with the theme of personalization. Personalization was the one thing that I leveraged to grow my Etsy shop to over $3 million in three years, 220,000 sales. Again, Etsy is a marketplace where people go yep. to buy unique goods that you can't find anywhere else. It's a giftable marketplace. Mm -hmm. So what products are going to sell better than personalized print products? And again, it used to be scary. It used to be hard. It um, used right. to be tedious. But now there are tools like Hello Custom mm -hmm. that literally automates it. Your business can be as passive as print on demand, but now it's on personalized print on demand. Right. And that was the one thing that, you know, Bridget changed uh, to go from $100,000 in Q1 through Q3 to doubling that in just Q4. Yep. Again, the perfect time to self-personalization. Um, I, I love that. Is there, was there any, um, in terms of personalization, so obviously mm -hmm. you didn't start with a uh, whole custom, um, mm -hmm. what were some like the pain points manually or what were there any pain points in doing that? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, because especially during Q4, since it's so busy and there's so many customers, like so many orders, uh, it's just manually having to do it. Like you have to go in and then also you're human. So you can make mistakes. You can end up, you know, spelling somebody's name or some date wrong. So I, the biggest pain point is that it's just how manual, like how con time consuming it can be. Yeah, yeah that, that makes complete sense. Like for us, it took like two to five minutes to personalize the graphic <laughs> and then like two to five minutes to update the order. And, you know, when you're doing that, you know, 10, 20, 30 times per day or even a right. thousand times per day like during a Christmas mm -hmm. rush, um, you know, there's just like, again, there's hiccups, there's mess ups, there's fatigue yep. <laughs> uh, versus a tool that you can just do it with the click of a button. Yep. Um, that, again, Bridget, I love your story. I love the fact that you're staying persistent. You're continually growing. And that's what I love about this too, is like anyone mm -hmm. can, can start an Etsy print on the man business. You can come in as a nurse or a teacher or even a stay at home right. mom. And there's so much like content out there that could teach you how mm -hmm. to do it. And again, the knowledge is there, but it still takes mm -hmm. the work. You know, it's been mm -hmm. thinking, like you put in the time, you put in the work, mm -hmm. you are, you know, a year and a half later and, you know, it's life changing. So mm -hmm. um, for the people who are maybe just finding out about Etsy Print mm -hmm. or kind of on the fence of getting started, like, do you have any advice for those people? I would say, first of all, just start because you're going to watch all the videos and you're just going to delay it and delay it. So just start, it's going to be messy. Like when we all started, like we just jumped right in and it was messy. We didn't know what we were doing and we just figured out as we went. And also going with the right mindset, because one of the biggest things that I've seen is like, we're like, we're all trying to teach you like how to do the skill. Like the skill can be taught. Like even Steven, like he has this launch strategy that he talks about over and over. This is what he's done and you can go and do it. But if you don't go in with the right mindset, like knowing it's going to take time, it's going to take effort. You can't go in thinking what SC is too saturated, what the fees are too high. I can't make no money. The only people that made money starting in 2020. If you're going in with that mindset, then of course it's not going to work. So you have to also go in with the right mindset from the beginning if you really want to see success. Because again, for me, it was a slow process. But from the get-go, I was going in with the mindset that I'm like, I'm making this work. And I didn't know the skills at level yet. But because I went in with that mi mindset and then once I matched the skill, 
I was able to like have success. So really you have to work on the way that you think about this business and anything period, because that's where you'll find success because a lot of us have found success and we all want to help you. But again, if you are not going in with the right mindset, it's just the skill alone is not going to take you. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't not agree more. Um, again, the last thing you want to do is a year from now, be wondering what if, like, what if I got mm -hmm. started last year when mm -hmm. I found out or I heard about Etsy Print On Demand? Because mm -hmm. again, a lot can happen in one year. So Bridget, again, I really respect your time. Thank you so much for jumping on with me today. Bridget is a YouTuber. She is teaching <laughs> Etsy Print On Demand. She is sharing her story. Would you mind sharing where people can find you and learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, so um, mostly on YouTube, but I'm also on Instagram and TikTok. And it's just stupid, easy POD. Is that simple? Because I want to make Print On Demand as simple for everybody to be able to be successful in it. Perfect. And I will include a link in the description below. So if anyone wants to go over to Bridget's YouTube channel, subscribe, watch her content, watch her story, watch her teachings. Uh, there will be a link in the description below. Thank you so much, Bridget. Have a good rest of your day. Again, thank you so much for having me.